Det börsnoterade Lundin Gold äger en guldgruva i Ecuador, Fruta del Norte. Bolaget har sitt huvudkontor i Vancouver i Kanada och noterat just både på Torontobörsen och i Stockholm. Aktierna har gått mycket starkt i år, framförallt efter att bolaget i somras höjde sina produktionsprognoser. Och jag pratade tidigare med bolagets vd Ron Hochstein som framför... Framförallt om generella utsikterna för guldpriset, men jag börjar med att fråga hur han ser på året så här långt för Lundin Gold. Yeah, it's actually been a great year. We did up our production forecast halfway through the year and actually we are what we understand we are the only company actually that reduced their cost guidance as well as we know many companies around the world are facing higher inflation, but in Ecuador we're not seeing that inflation and the team's doing a great job at site. So we actually are in after our third quarter production where we produced just over 120,000 ounces we've now indicated that we're targeting for the upper end of our production guidance which is 460,000 ounces for the year mm. and actually beating the lower end of our cost guidance which is 820 dollars per ounce so that puts us as you know a, for a one mine company mm. pretty significant producer and probably one of the lowest cost producers of a true gold mine. You see any signs of higher cost in Ecuador as well, in line with the rest of the world, so to speak? No, we're not seeing it. We're, we, one of the advantages we have is energy is a big component of a lot of people's cost increases. Uh, Ecuador is 85% hydro, so we're not seeing that impact on energy. And then the other big impact that many companies around the world are seeing is wage inflation. Mm -hmm. And we're just not seeing that. We are the only uh, Western operated mine in, uh, the largest Western operated mine in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. And so we see a lot of people actually want to come work for Fruta del Norte and Lending Gold. Mm -hmm. And so we don't see the wage inflation, which is great because, as we know, wage inflation is permanent. Yeah. It's hard to get that out. Is that about the cost and when it comes to revenue? Obviously, the gold price has, uh, price has uh, big significance for you. I last time I looked a couple of minutes ago, the gold price today is 17.74 uh, ounce per dollar per, per ounce, ounce, I should yeah. say. And uh, actually, it's uh, down 5% this year. And we have written a lot of times in our magazine that this is kind of surprising. Looking at history, gold is a safe harbor, so to speak, when the rest of the world is worrying, as it is now with war and inflation. Yeah. What's the explanation? You know what, you're right. Every, if you were to go into a coma and wake up and see all these things, you'd say, exactly. well, gold must be $18,000, $2,000 an ounce. Exactly. Um, it, what it really is right now is the U.S. dollars become a safe haven as the alternate for gold. And so we've seen a lot of strengthening in the U.S. dollar over the last little while. But when you look at a lot of things now, I think we're at a turning point in gold. We may see a little bit more weakness for the next few months, but we really believe we're at a turning point for gold because the US dollar really is almost at its peak. And you know, you're hearing more and more and you look at the economics about potential recessions. You start to see that interest rate pull back, like not even maybe not necessarily decreases, but lower increases, like rather than 0.75 and that, if the Fed starts to bring that back to lower increases, mm -hmm. I think you're really going to see a shift to away from the U.S. dollar mm -hmm. and to gold. We're seeing an increase in physical demand. People, investors are starting to go back into it. But um, we, we really believe that, uh, yeah, we will see a much stronger gold market probably within the next three to six months. So what you're saying is that instead of a flight to gold, it has, it has been a flight to dollar, which is sort of hurting the gold price. That's exactly what's happened. And, uh, you know, it, it, it typically with inflation and everything, you, you see, you would have seen a flight to gold. Mm. But the U.S. economy has done so well. Mm. And that was, what's driven the U.S. dollar. And there's just this general, if you look at safe havens, which yeah. gold tends to be, is people felt that the U.S. was a safer haven. Yeah. However, if that economy starts to, to shudder or weaken yeah. at all, yeah. where's the next safe haven? It's going to be in gold. Um, another theory that you can read about is opposite to what you say, that is that demand for physical gold is actually decreasing now when, when the world goes into worse economic condition. But you don't really agree here. No, I think we're seeing, you know, 50% of the gold is in jewelry, and that's China, India are the big consumers. Mm. They will continue to consume. Mm. Um, we're actually, where what's happening in the investment market is actually kind of a shift to uh, actually people buying physical gold versus paper gold or ETFs. Mm, mm, mm. We're seeing a bit of a shift there. Mm. The, yeah, demand may fall a little bit, but the other thing is you got central banks 
also are really starting to up their buying. Yeah. And so I think overall, with the, these factors, I think we're going to see a strong market for gold and then uh, a stronger demand for it as the U.S. dollar weakens. F finally, another theory that you can read about, which is quite interesting, I think, is that uh, the, the cryptocurrencies has sort of a little bit taken over from gold as a safe haven. Is that something that you... <laughs> I'm sure you heard it. I, I oh, yeah. There was a lot of theories and a lot of correlations that were done. You know, I, you go back a year, 18 months ago, a lot of correlations between Bitcoin and, and gold and that. But, you know, we've seen a couple meltdowns or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, melt, I guess meltdown is probably the best word for it in the crypto space. Yeah. And I think people are starting to realize that, you know, the crypto is just that, is what's behind it. Yeah. And so I think there's a bit of a disjointment now. You, know, you don't read near as much anymore about that correlation between Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and gold. Okay. But uh, to summarize, Ron, the, uh, the gold has not really taken off, but there are some explanation. But now everything points at a stronger gold price uh, for the next 6, 12 months. Is that, Absolutely. Is that yeah, and I think we're going to see a very strong gold market. Yeah. So I think you know, we did reach uh, just over $2,000 an ounce earlier this year. I think we will be back up there in, in the six months or so and, and, and higher. I think it's going to be a great time for the gold industry. Thank you very much, Ron Hochstein, for joining us here. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much.